That's why you can't stop this thing. It's not just anti-war. It's not just anti-war. What's the question? Uh, how does Martin Luther King relate to the Occupy movement? Well, Martin Luther King was a drum major for justice. And he fought for equality. And his thought is now alive in the philosophy that moves the people involved in the different Occupy movements around the country. We're basing it off of Martin Luther King's um, principles of nonviolence. I think that if we um, are focusing on that as we are involved in this movement and if we are, you know, just repeating his principles, just to live by it, being nonviolent, being peaceful, working away from the injustices in a nonviolent way, I think that um, that's the biggest message that people should take from this movement. All right, so honestly, I, I really do feel and believe that. Uh, He'd be extremely proud of what's going on today and what's going on right now. I feel just inspired to even be amongst a group of people who, who want to kind of honor and, and apply his way of thinking, his philosophies, which aren't extreme or, or irrelevant. They, they make complete sense to me, and I feel like every human on this earth knows exactly what he's talking about. They feel it. They just choose not to embrace it, and they choose not to apply it. And I just want to say to everyone out there watching, if you can stand for something, then you stand. If you stand for nothing, then you're, you're doing no good for yourself, you know? Like, I feel like we all need to at one point occupy something, whether it be our own personal issues or the community around us. But the sooner we can occupy and get together and stand together and stand united, for, for a common cause and just embrace that common cause, I think I know that we'll be good. And I feel like this is just one of those steps, stepping toward that, that goal. And I feel like, if anything, we are continuing Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy. We are continuing to inspire people to really stand up for what they believe in and to really be heard without using violence, you know, and just spreading that love and just really having a point and a message. And it's all love. I'm excited to be here. What's up, Guido, Luminaries crew? Beautiful day here in Santa Monica, celebrating the uh, birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. And um, Martin Luther King Jr., I think, embodied everything in the true spirit and essence of what the Occupy movement uh, represents, in the fact that he was the, one of the originators to do what we're doing now. He followed in the footsteps of Gandhi, and he he really put his life on the line for his ideals, for not just racial equality or injustice, but for human rights for all. And you could see in the, the solemn nature of as he led those marches, as he went up against dogs and police hoses, he really was in, in the true essence of of his spirit. He, he really, you know, he really did it in a way that was that was noble and he, he led as an example for the whole Occupy movement. There's a great quote from Martin Luther King. There comes a time where silence is betrayal. And I think that those words are so simple yet so timeless and so relevant right now where all of us in the Occupy movement are raising up our voices and um, you know, sharing our disdain for this political system that's completely failed us. Um, he had tremendous courage, you know, speaking out against the oppression. And regardless of what people told him, uh, he still went forth. Um, there was no convenient time to say that what was happening to him and, and to black people was wrong. And that's to me, that's the exact same way I feel about Occupy Movement. You know, we have been we have been trying to do the voting and trying to speak out and say what's wrong and we haven't been listened to. Uh, our only choice now is to do what we're doing and that's with marches, teaches in, uh, gathering, make, you know, making a community out of the people who have been oppressed. Uh, Martin Luther King is, is truly inspiring because he's, he's taught us through his own life that people can make a difference. If they stop being, a, if they stop being scared of what could happen to them, 
and speak out, stand up, join you know, join the Occupy community and join the Occupy movement, and just be a person walking, just be a person on the computer saying that what our government is doing is wrong. Um, every single one of us can make a difference. Martin Luther King was fighting for civil rights for everybody in the United States, equality. Um, and now that technically we've got that and people of all color have that, uh, now we're actually fighting just to regain our basic uh, Bill of Rights rights, the, the things that our country is based on, the, the freedoms that um, all Americans uh, are understood to have, whether they're, they're born or, or naturalized. And uh, we've lost a lot of those with the Patriot Act and the NDAA. And there's just a lot of um, undermining of, of what it means to be an American any, anymore. So uh, I think that Martin Luther King harkens back to a time when we were inspired by somebody who, you know, sacrificed himself for a real message in a nonviolent a poignant manner. So, we fought for justice, equality, these two ideals that we are here to defend and we are here to keep alive because these are not only American ideals, these are ideals that the whole world should be fighting for and that we should be keep, keeping in, deep in the root of humanity. So, that's, that's my thought on how and why I'm here on Martin Luther King's Day. Hi, I'm Nancy Lawrence and with the Peace and Freedom Party. And I was actually at the Martin Luther King Parade today and there was a contingent there, uh, uh, Occupy the Hood. And they understand very well that King, he would be marching with us if he were alive today. He, just before he was murdered, he was actually organizing something very similar, a camp out in front of the White House. And he was killed, perhaps partially because of that. So he definitely would be with us uh, today if he were alive. But his spirit is with us, and the spirit is marching with us, and he's moving forward with us. The Occupy movement and the society today needs to take that message and take it to the next level, which is to say, that yes, we recognize that our government has continued to increase military spending, uh, it has decreased spending in all of the areas which um, foment and foster social reform, whether it be education, healthcare, um, social work, social reforms, etc. Um, and it's not okay because they've filtered that back into the military and you can see the obvious result, which is an increase in the discrepancy between the wealthy and the poor. I think that Occupy has taken that upon itself and would like to change that. The connection between Occupy and Martin Luther King is nonviolence. We can't be free here if others are oppressed abroad, and especially not if we're doing the oppression. So what I really love, you know, of all the wonderful things about MLK is that, you know, he included the whole world. You know, it wasn't just a stance for his people. You know, it was a stance for people all over the world uh, against uh, poverty and exploitation and militarism, you know, and injustice and all these things. Uh, and he was never compromised. You know, he was just a man of virtue and, uh, and, and great foresight. I mean, he was just prophetic in so many things that he said. And, uh, and, and he included the whole world, you know, not just what his cause was. So I'm here to support, represent, and I love the brother. Because anytime you stand up to a violent system, it responds to what it knows, which is violence. And uh, nonviolent activism and uh, direct action against injustice is the kind of thing that Martin Luther King preached and practiced. And uh, the Occupy movement, you know, does a, a service to him and a service to itself by following his teachings. So as we stand here, you know, in the energy and the memory of Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King. Several things he said just resonated for today, for me, for you, or for us. In this description of himself, which I understand is on the monument, he said, tell them that I was a drum major. For peace, a drum major for equality, a drum major for justice, a drum major for righteousness. And when I thought about that, I thought, that's what each and every one of you are here today. You're the drum major. The baton has been passed, 
and you said yes. That's what it means when you showed up today. You said yes, not just for yourself, but for the community. This is your community, and it may not even be your community. You just came to be a part of it. For the next generation, even though you may not be planning on having any children per se. <laughs> for our world, you showed up and said, I'm going to be the drum major. I'm going to impact the issues. So what are the issues today? What? What are they? Peace? Unemployment? Freedom? Economic inequality. Economic inequality? Climate change? Climate change? Oh, yeah. Militarism? All the spending that's going on for the military? <laughs> Mass incarceration of minorities? Incarceration of minorities. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, it just goes on and on and on. And the other thing that I read that Martin Luther King said that I thought was so powerful, he said it really isn't so much the tragedy of oppression or, you know, the cruelty of bad people. It's the silence of the good people. That's the issue. It's the silence of the good people. So today, the good people in Occupy Venice are saying, no more. No more silence, no more quiet, no more. No more ignoring it, no more acting like it didn't happen, no more acting like it's going to go away. And here's the big thing, no more acting like someone's going to rescue us. Nobody's going to rescue us. Absolutely right. We have got to do it ourselves. So your being here today says you understand that, you accept the baton across cultural lines across economic lines, across racial lines, across educational lines. You showed up, stood here, had a little bit to munch on. You will walk again to say, we are carrying the baton, and we stand for righteousness, for peace, for justice, for freedom, and equality across all lines for everyone. Yes? Yes. Yes? 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 the revolution. So when you walk today, as you go down that boardwalk, know that's what you're doing. You are heightening the awareness of every person who looks at every single one of these signs that you are carrying, reminding them. Because everybody couldn't do it, but you could. You could show up and say, let me remind you. Okay, you matter. Each and every one of you matter. We marry. The 99% matters. The 99% it matters. And if they don't get it, then we get to be the ones in the tradition of Martin Luther King and a little bit of Malcolm X too, and God need to say, we matter. Yes? We, we matter. 99% matters. Have a wonderful walk. You know, I'm a minister because I have you all here all day. So I don't want you out here listening to me preaching. I just want to inspire you, encourage you, and empower you and let you know that what you're doing is making a difference. Absolutely positive. Without a doubt. Thank you for having States, me here today. The United States ought to be ashamed of itself.